When dealing with a topic like the second coming, one needs to be a bit careful, and the career's advice I had at school hasn't been much help. All I knew in those days was what I didn't want to do, so I pursued not doing it with the greatest of vigour. As a consequence, and after travelling abroad for many months, I found myself in a remote and beautiful place with time on my hands. My location afforded me a 360 degree panorama with tremendous skies and nights of the silence and blackness that my soul craved. I've always wanted to know the whys and wherefores of things, and at some point I got around to asking the spirit of the world, there was no one else, what the Jesus and Bible stories were all about. Should I believe them and save my soul, or, or what? To my surprise, answers came aplenty, and I found myself invited into a world of stars and mythology, in neither of which I had the slightest of interests. But before I knew it, I was hooked. Finding the fish was a major breakthrough in understanding how the stars and mythology were linked, for it showed me just how lifelike star pictures should be. If you catch the fish in the northeast as it rises above the horizon, it appears to be leaping up the waterfall of the Milky Way. The generally accepted reason that Jesus Christ is linked to a fish concerns a convoluted Greek and Latin phrase, but the reality is that without this fish he would be neither Christ nor Messiah, nor would we have a king of heaven, for kings also need anointing, and the fish is crucial in that particular ceremony, as we shall see. Earlier in the night, or earlier in the year, as the fish flaps on the northern horizon, it reveals another side of its character. A friend spotted this altar image immediately, for she said it reminded her of Aladdin's lamp. Her son happened to be performing in the school pantomime of Aladdin at the time. Out of the spout puffs the smoke of the Milky Way, which, wafting into Cassiopeia, puts a limit on our wishes. We'll find out who the genie of the lamp is later on. The convoluted Greek and Latin explanation for the anointed as a fish results in the Greek word for fish, ichthys, as seen on this replica of an old oil lamp. The fish in Perseus, when seen as an oil lamp, gives us the tool used for anointing. Thus all three elements, Jesus, fish and Christ the anointed, are combined. Finding the subtle details that make up good star pictures takes time, but effort is often rewarded with some unexpected little gem. To the left of Perseus lies the constellation of Auriga, and, not to be outdone, it too can be seen as a number. This small but distinctive triangle, next to the bright capella, provides a subtle detail for any cryptic crossword types who might be watching this. The Fisher Live nursery rhyme can now be seen for what it is, a tool for learning the stars. Auriga can also be seen as a hand, with the little triangle now becoming the thumb nail. Have you ever wondered why fingernails are called nails? It's amazing what star pictures can explain, as we shall see. Let's put all this into the beauty of a real night sky. The stars in the photo have been enhanced for clarity, and yes, it is two photos put together, but have you started to recognise our three main constellations? Cassiopeia, Perseus and Auriga. This small but distinctive group of four stars forms part of the huge Andromeda constellation, but if you connect it with Cassiopeia, you will find a wonderful image, one that can explain a lot. Everything from God to nails. Watch this. What are little boys made of? Made of snaps and snails and puppy dogs' tails. That's what little boys are made of. The snail is of huge significance when it comes to our lost Stella legacy. Not just because little boys would be little girls without them, but also because snails, as an archaic exclamation meaning God's nails, gives a glimpse of how words have developed in relation to star pictures. The snap's reference is to the angry posture of this fellow's mouth, and the snail in the mouth not only makes a meal for the French, but also lends its characteristics to Moses, who was slow of mouth and slow of tongue. Oh, and by the way, there is a tortoise in the area as well. God's nails? Why should God have nails? Well, he was a carpenter. God's nails appear to be driven through the stellar dome from above, their points presenting to us here on Earth as pointy wedges, and the snail's tail is a perfect example of one of these. Our picture is nearly complete, for we have the fish lamp as the anointing vessel, Herman Melville's Moby Dick provides the oil, and we have the head, or countenance divine, onto which the oil is being poured. The left hand of Auriga is poised nicely, 
and its goatee alter image, which the stars Capella and Mars confirm, reinforces the importance of this scene. For when Jesus, the Son of Man, returns, you will see him on the clouds of heaven, the Milky Way, and at the final judgment he will put the goats on his left hand. Strange how the end of the world was as compelling then as it is now. It seems little changes in the human psyche. So, to conclude, pictures in the stars provide the raw material from which the storytellers of old worked. Knowing these pictures allows us to sort fact from fantasy, sense from nonsense, and in my case gave me a chance to find something far more profound than the kick about God of religions. Whatever that something may be, it is for real and it is available to all for free. For me, the beautiful twist to this revelation is that those who think they are engaged in the serious business of saving souls are in fact dealing with nonsense, while nonsense can teach you the stars, which in turn will reveal the truth. One, two, three, four, five, once I caught a fish alive, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, then I let him go again. One, two, three, four, five, once I caught a fish alive, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, then I let him go again.